Hi, it's Jeff here. Today we are going to do an oil filter change on a Corolla using a cartridge oil filter. To do this job you will need to ensure you have a special tool that you will need to buy from somewhere like eBay. Uh, specialist auto dealers will also have them. But essentially if you don't have this tool it is very difficult to do this job. It's well worth purchasing if you intend to keep your Corolla for a while. You will need to make sure that you have a 3 8 wrench to use with the cartridge remover. The cartridge can be bought from any specialist filter manufacturer. They will come with the actual cartridge, some instructions, and other bits and pieces that you may need, including the O-rings. To find the oil filter housing, you will need to get under the car and go towards the back of the engine on the left-hand side. And you'll see this sitting down under the car out of harm's way. Once you have located, you can put your special tool onto the actual oil filter housing. Then you can go and undoing the actual housing until it comes right off. You'll see as you get closer to it that oil will start dripping out. You should ensure that you have a drip tray underneath the vehicle or a group of rags to ensure that you don't get oil on your garage floor. Once it has come free, some oil will come out you just need to tip that around to ensure that you reduce the amount of oil that is coming out of the housing. Once you have that housing out, you need to pull the cartridge out of the housing and you dispose of that. It is best to have a rag available so you can clean things up. So that should go directly into the bin, ready for you to replace it with the next cartridge. Just ensure you visually inspect it to make sure that there's no components that you may need later. So once you have got that out, it's now a matter of cleaning the actual housing up. You can see that it's covered in quite a lot of oil. So have a clean rag available. You might need to tip some extra oil out into a drip tray. Just ensure you do visually inspect it to make sure there's no metal filings or any fragments in there, which might indicate that you've got other problems with your engine. Mine is perfect, so it's just a matter of cleaning that up and ensuring you get as much oil off as possible. You'll also need to make sure that you get the O-ring off. I use a small screwdriver just to get that started and then I'll roll that off the end. Once you've got that started, just roll it, put it down, clean the groove in the housing where the actual o-ring is located just to ensure there's no gunk or anything that might stop the new o-ring sealing. Get the new o-ring out of the bag and simply just roll it over the thread until you find it in the groove. Now it sits in the groove, don't push the o-ring all the way down so it sits on the actual housing. Make sure it goes in the special groove for the actual o-ring. Once you've done that you can pop the new filter into the housing Give it a press down and twist just to make sure it seals properly and make sure that the spring is also working okay. Now it's a matter of actually reassembling the oil filter into the housing. What you'll need to do is make sure you give this a good clean up. You can see there's a bit of oil still dripping out of the engine. So I've just grabbed an old pair of undies. Just make sure they've gone through the wash first. You'll need to make sure that you use a rag that doesn't leave any fabric behind because you don't want that getting clogged up in your engine. You can see that this rag is doing a good job and it's cleaning up everything that I need. Next thing you'll need to do is get ready to reinsert the housing with the cartridge in it. Just make sure and double check that uh, you have put a film of oil around the actual O-ring. Might need to jiggle that around to get that to screw in properly. And once it's started, you just screw that in. It should screw in quite easily until the actual O-ring starts to move into the housing. That's when you'll need to get your special tool out and put it over the top to actually get it in all the way. So just screw that in. You can see it's getting tight there in the video. Locate your housing. You might need to jig a little bit. Line up the grooves. Wiggle it around a bit until it's all located properly. You can see it's sitting in there. 
and it's sitting right. So you just screw that up until it actually, the face of the bit that's turning joins the housing. And once you've got it down to touch, which is going to happen in a second, just need to make sure that you just give it a little extra nudge just to make sure that it's nice and firm. It doesn't have to be super tight, just tightened up enough so it doesn't leak and it's not going to come out. Once you've got that all tightened up again, just give it a good clean and make sure that everything is nice and spick and span. Right, so once you've got that housing all tightened up, it's now a matter of just starting the car, but make sure you put oil in it, and make sure that you've got everything topped up properly because if you run your engine without oil, you risk catastrophic damage that will cost you thousands of dollars to fix.